Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, I'm gonna have a quick discussion of why I don't show using different finishes. Um, and I, I don't show that in my videos so much anymore. So hopefully you all are having a great day out there today. Uh, this subject comes up a lot quite often. I get asked this in the comment section of almost every single video I do that's a project is what finish do you use or what, what did you do to finish that piece or this or that? I've here recently in you know, recent years, I've been trying to pull back some from actually showing all of my finish work. And there's a couple reasons for that. None of it is to take and be non-educational or non-instructive or to, I got some secret goop that I put on my stuff to make it look so good. Uh, th there's nothing like that. Predominantly, it comes boils down to just a few reasons of why I do not show my blacksmith finish work anymore. One of those largest reasons is for the safety Nazis that are out there. Um, I am a very safe individual in my shop to my own standards. Obviously, I don't have somebody standing over and watching over my shoulder all day long. Probably wouldn't get along with it. I have certain acceptable amounts of risk that I'm willing to risk in my shop, and there's other risks that I'm not willing to take. You're gonna have this in your own shop as well. Otherwise, we would all just go around <laughs> surrounded, or wrapped up in bubble wrap and never go outside or do anything, right? So what we work in is a very dangerous trade and a very dangerous craft. This is a trade for me. This isn't just a hobby or just something I do for fun on the weekends. This is a trade and a craft for me. So I am constantly in my shop almost dang near daily, um, unless I've got design work or quote work to do. I'm in this shop and I'm working on the daily. So what's some of the finishing things that would cause for alarm, right? Well, for instance, you see I'm, I'm wearing a shirt here. This is a button up shirt. It could be considered a loose shirt or a baggy shirt. And that working around equipment, you're not supposed to wear loose clothing of any kind. Generally, when you get into trouble with that is when you've got a tail untucked and it's getting by a machine that could suck you in. Or if you have really baggy loose arms cufflinks that are undone that can get sucked and pulled and wrapped you up into a machine. None of the equipment that I have here has that much torque, I would say. The only thing I have in my shop that doesn't get used that often is actually a pipe threading machine. That, you get wound up in that, it's gonna break things and it will never know that you're there. It's, it's all torque. Um, most of the machines in my shop, my belts and my guards and all those things are all up to date. They're all safe. There's no chance of me getting pulled into any particular thing. One of the other safety concerns that people have um, about you getting wrapped up and stuff is gloves. There's this whole thing out there, gloves, no gloves, right? There are finish work, there are certain finishes that I do that it is not possible, and I'm telling you right now, it is not humanly possible for you to not wear a glove. It's an accepted risk that you have to take in order to have that finish. Um, but that being said, that's not an acceptable risk that somebody who is a beginning smith needs to take um, in order to get that kind of finish. It's a professional. It's someone who knows what they're doing um, that, that can make those judgment calls on whether that's an acceptable risk or not. So I don't want to be teaching anybody to take and do stupid. You know, it's do as I say, not as I do, right? One of those sort of deals. One of the biggest things that I've in the past gotten a, a, a lot of a lot of comments on um, complaints is wearing gloves while using a wire wheel, a wire cup wheel. And, and there's another thing I get, you know, uh, you know, there's concerns on this as well. This thing is probably one of the da most dangerous tools that you got in the shop. This thing will send those little fleekers off of there, those little wires at like Mach 2 right into your face. If you're not wearing at bare bones minimum safety glasses while wearing this in my shop, well, you're just not in my shop anymore. Um, these things go everywhere. I've had, I've pulled a one inch long piece of this out of my stomach before by not wearing a shop apron. Usually I wear a shop apron when I'm wire wheeling. Sometimes I wear a full face mask, sometimes I don't. It just depends on the application and how long I'm gonna be wire wheeling something for. In the context of YouTube and in videos, the way that we're doing videos here on the channel, I don't always have that luxury to just spend five minutes gearing up for everything. 
I need to bzz, bzz, kind of grind off something real quick and just get back to filming. That's not an excuse for unsafe practices to progress long term, but again, it's one of those things where it's an accepted balance of risk for my time and my day um, for the day. When I use, when I do wire wheeling or anything like that, I use tight fitting gloves and there is a difference. A tight fitting glove is not gonna wrap you up in anything like tight fitting clothing won't. If you're wearing spandex, no machine's gonna pull you in. But a loose fitting glove with cuffs like this, that will grab and snag and pull your hand into a machine. I don't use these gloves on anything but forge work. These are hot work gloves um, and they present their own dangers. Right there, you could get scale that drips down through there. I've got a really bad burn from a forge weld I did years ago that burnt all the way to bone um, on this hand here. And it was from wearing a pair of gloves like this. Now when I'm doing a forge weld, I take the gloves off um, when I'm doing a really heavy duty forge weld and I just let my skin burn <laughs> at, at, the, at the temperature from the hot steel. But a tight fitting glove that has a band on it that locks, you, locks your hand in, a really tight fitting glove that locks on right there. There's nothing, there's nothing to catch and pull your arm into machinery, nothing like that. So I wear these. That's what I do when I'm using um, the wire wheel. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, why would you need that at all? One, to protect my knuckles. Um, again, lots of extensive wire wheel work. I, I like to wear gloves to protect my knuckles for that. And the other thing that I do is I do a, I do what they call a hot wire wheel finish or a hot blued finish on a lot of my steel projects. So I will bring that thing up to about a thousand degrees or so, or just under red, like a dark red, let it cool to black. And then I will wire wheel the heck out of it with one of these uh, wire cup wheels. People will lose their mind on the internet seeing you wearing a pair of gloves, because you have to, around a wire wheel <laughs> holding a hot piece of steel and a pair of tongs, because you have to, because it's an awkward shape, and running a wire wheel on there. Again, that isn't for the faint of heart. It's an accepted risk for the particular finish that I'm after, so I will wear gloves and other necessary protective equipment for that. Beyond that, the last reason why I don't show uh, my blacksmith finishes is because there's no secret to blacksmith finishes at all, really, anymore. I've done so many videos where I've done basically every blacksmith finish known to man on my steel. Um, I've put it in all of my videos up until this point, so I've kind of pulled back from it now. Beeswax, it's a traditional finish. Oil, if you're using an oil, like an oil finish, like a seasoning cookware, again, it goes without saying it's oil. You put oil on there. If you want to use beeswax, use beeswax, a waxed finish, your paraffin wax. They have their upsides, they have their downsides. There's value in all the different finishes out there. In fact, if you just search blacksmith finishes, one of my videos will come up uh, on that. And I did a big video where I covered the finishes that I'm using currently. Um, some oils are toxic and they're caustic and you don't want to take and breathe them in when you're finishing your work. Generally, you don't inhale any smoke whatsoever into your lungs. But again, it's an occupational hazard that we live with because it's the trade that we're in. Other finishes, black spray paint, clear spray paint, no particular brand. This is a do it best rust coat enamel. This is a Rust-Oleum clear coat. Um, and I've got all sorts of the other stuff, Valspar and you name it. Um, painted finish, there's not a whole lot to take and say about that other than just follow the directions on the can if you're gonna paint your ironwork. And so that's kind of the second thing. So the first one is safety and the kind of safety Nazis out there um, that are armchair quarterbacking that may have been doing it for a few years or maybe they've been doing it for 30 years in a different industry telling me in my shop how I'm going to get it done when I've been doing it for a decade. Um, it's just, it doesn't help anybody. It doesn't help the beginner. It doesn't help the seasoned pro. It just opens up rooms for, you know, squabbling, petty squabbling about who's right and who's wrong. And I just don't care to get into that. Um, and then the second reason, just to 
just to sum everything up, is because it's all been done before, and chances are you've watched a zillion videos, and it's all the same thing. There's really only so many ways you can go with finishing steel or finishing ironwork of any kind. If it's indoor, if it's indoors, you can use all the traditional finishes. Oils, waxes, um, you know, raw. You can use those things because it's in a climate controlled environment and it's not gonna see a lot of moisture and it's gonna take a long time, depending on your location in the world, for it to take and degrade your ironwork over time. If it's outdoors, paint. Paint, 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 uh, paint and paint. There you go, paint. At the end of the day, it's paint, right? Um, there's hot dip galvanization and some of that other stuff, but if you're doing that, chances are you're not watching a video tutorial on YouTube on finishes. You've already far surpassed any of my videos uh, when it comes to actual finishes. That's totally different. That's, that's architectural applications and you're spending tons of dough to have like hot dip galvanization and things like that go on with your with your iron work. So that's why I don't do finishes anymore. I know this is kind of a, like a longer uh, rant video, if you will. Uh, I hope it's informative enough to you. Again, I have an entire I have entire videos on the subject. All you gotta do is Google my name and blacksmith finishes, and that will come up. But uh, yeah, that's the reason why you won't be seeing a lot of the finish work and things like that. Outside of hand sanding, I might explain a little bit about what I'm going to do, but beyond that, it's just otherwise redundant. So that's it for today. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you like this video, you want to support what we do, hit the thumbs up and like and comment. You know what I mean? Comment and uh, you know subscribe if that's something you're into. Also, another way of supporting us financially here at Christ Center Ironworks and helping us continue to make great content in the future, you can always go check out our uh, blacksmithing blanks over at blacksmithingblanks.com that we sell uh, to beginners and uh, professionals alike that are creating little businesses out there and stuff on them. You go check that website. All that will be linked up in the description down below. So that's it for today. God bless each and every last one of you, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you for watching.